the mall after dark. Back in the 1980s, indoor shopping malls were all the craze, and our local mall was the cream of the crop, top of the charts, without question, the absolute best. It was a three-story mega mall with everything anyone could ever need. Department stores, a grocery store, nice restaurants, greasy restaurants, a pet store, shoe stores, novelty stores, toy stores, book stores, game stores, manicurists, a fitness center, a gigantic arcade, and all kinds of unique specialty shops. I was all about our local mall. There was nowhere else I wanted to be. It was my life. I was a genuine mall rat and I was proud of it. I would go there directly after school and do my homework in the food court while wolfing down a basket of french fries. Then I'd walk through the mall, do a little shopping, play some arcade games, and finally, reluctantly, head home. My parents were not thrilled about me spending so much time at the mall, to the point that they demanded I get a job after school. So I did. In the mall. I got a job at the Mystic Wonders Candle Shop. It was a candle shop that had every type of candle you could imagine, and then about a thousand more. They had walls of scented candles in every aroma and size you could think of. They had votive candles, pillar candles, tin candles, ceramic candles, beeswax candles, crackling wood wick candles, floating candles, tea light candles, multi-wick candles, taper candles, gel candles, and an array of novelty candles. There were candles in the shape of any animal you could name. They had candles carved into waterfalls, flowers, beehives, and pies. The featured candle in the store was an eight-foot-tall wax dragon with wicks running down its spine. The thing cost over 2,000 bucks. No one was ever going to buy it, which was fine with me. It felt like it was watching over the store, protecting the employees. The only downside to it was that I had to get on a ladder to dust it. Oh, and the smell of the store was nothing short of heavenly... It was a mixture of pine forest, an ocean breeze, a bakery, and a fruit stand. I loved that place. It was a pleasure to work there. It was a Thursday night, and business was particularly slow. I was the sole employee at the candle shop that night and had to work late to do inventory. I didn't mind, and my parents were out of town so I didn't have to worry about them hounding me for getting home late. It was going to be nice to have the entire house all to myself, and I had set the VCR to record the latest episode of Knott's Landing. My night was set. When I finally closed shop and pulled the metal security gate down over the entrance of the store, the mall was deserted. Every store was closed. The employees were gone and there wasn't a soul in sight. Void of life? The mall's vibe was completely different. I had always imagined having the entire mall to myself to be wondrous, but in reality, it was a little spooky. The clicking of my heels echoed throughout the darkened mall. I was more than halfway down the corridor that exited out the back of the mall where my car was parked, when the outside door swung open and a burly mall security guard entered pushing a wheelbarrow. That was odd, but not odd enough to keep me from advancing toward the door. No, what brought me to a halt was the sight of the bloody hand dangling out of the wheelbarrow. The security guard paused to stuff the lifeless extremity back into the wheelbarrow, or he would have spotted me. I had mere seconds to make a decision. If I ran, he'd hear the clicking of my heels, so I quickly, carefully stepped out of my loud shoes, picked them up, and silently dashed down the side corridor. The corridor, unfortunately, didn't possess an exit. It was lined with payphones and had restrooms at the end of it. I thought of hiding in the women's room, but figured the security guard might check those bathrooms at night when he did rounds, and I'd have nowhere to hide if he checked the stalls. The only other option was the janitor's closet, so I darted into there. 
While the door was labeled janitor's closet, it was really more of a locker room slash break room. There were a bunch of lockers in there. Some employees hung their coats in there, especially during winter. Some changed in there. There was also a table area with vending machines and various employees took their breaks in there. Believe it or not, there was even a huge shower in the corner of the room. It was mostly used by the janitor for changing mop water, but if someone wanted to take a shower in there, they could. I opened one of the lockers as quietly as I could, stepped inside, and latched the door behind me. I had a subtle fear that I may be locking myself in, but that fear took a major backseat to being murdered. I made a point to breathe shallow and listen closely. I could hear the squeak of the wheelbarrow's tire as it was being pushed down the main corridor of the mall. I was hoping to hear the squeak diminish gradually as the security guard wheeled it far away from this area, but the opposite happened. It got louder and louder, and suddenly, I heard the subtle whoosh of the janitor's closet door being pushed open. He was bringing the body into the very room I was hiding in. I was so glad I decided to get into the locker. I was positioned in a way that I could see through the vent slits at the top of the locker and watched on in horror as the security guard pushed the wheelbarrow to the back of the room and dumped the body into the shower. The body was that of a naked woman. She was covered in blood. The security guard left the room for a few minutes and then returned holding something large. I wasn't sure what it was until he pulled a string on it and it revved to life. It was a chainsaw. This crazy man was going to saw this woman to bits. I had seen this security guard multiple times before. He was hard to forget because of his size. He was big enough to be an NFL offensive lineman. He was usually working the night shift so I passed him a time or two when I was leaving. But I distinctly remember him coming into the candle store one time and purchasing a scented candle. I recalled him asking for the strongest scent we had. I had recommended Lavender Fields. It was when he lowered the chainsaw and I saw the first splatter against the shower walls that I realized the security guard had put on a clear plastic raincoat of some sort to shield his clothes from the storm of blood. Oh, and there was blood. A lot of it. I could feel myself growing weak in the knees as he carved up the body. Even though the chainsaw was deafening, I could hear the chain ripping through the woman's flesh. Occasionally the chain would holler and the security guard would shake violently as the chainsaw blade struck bone and then proceeded to rip through it. I witnessed huge chunks of flesh explode against the shower walls like fleshy spit wads. It seemed like forever before he finally turned the chainsaw off. That was the scariest time. Everything was deathly silent. If I made one tiny squeak, he'd rip the locker open and carve me up too. He bent down for quite some time after that. In that position it was hard for me to see, but I caught enough glimpses to get the gist of it. He was placing different body parts in individual garbage bags and tying them up. After that, he spent hours cleaning up the shower and surrounding area. He then slipped out of his blood-soaked raincoat, put it in a bag of its own, and tossed it in the wheelbarrow with the bagged body parts. I almost felt like an accessory when I saw the security guard place the lavender field-scented candle on a table near the shower and light it. He left after that. I didn't dare move. I figured there was a good likelihood he'd return to the janitor's closet for something. If I tried to leave, I ran the risk of walking right into him, and I didn't spend all that time in a stuffy locker watching a woman get shredded with a chainsaw to get caught by making a dumb move like that. So I stayed there. I cried silently and stayed inside that hot, suffocating locker until the next day. At some point, a janitor came in and got a mop and bucket, and then a store employee entered. 
I could hear them rattle a locker door open and then observe them purchase a bag of chips from a vending machine before they exited. It was only then that I felt safe leaving. I opened the locker and casually walked out of the room. I remember having a sneaking fear that I was going to slam right into that big security guard as I turned the corner, but I didn't. Instead, I was welcomed by the life of multiple shoppers strolling through the mall. I hurried out of the mall to my car and sped all the way home. My instinct was to call the police and tell them what happened, but then I got to thinking of what a huge story this was going to be. Hordes of people would be scared to shop in the mall ever again. Surely it would hurt businesses in the mall. It may even close it down permanently. I couldn't risk that. That was my home. My parents' home was my home away from home. The mall was my actual home. I couldn't run the risk of ruining my home. I kept my mouth shut and made sure never to work that late ever again.